uh, Wi-Fi issues. Can y'all hear me? I'm so sorry. Here I am, moving along, didn't even notice that, uh, that it dropped me. Okay, well, we're making our sugar skull mixture. So I will do it again, since I'm gonna guess that you didn't get to see that. My sincere apologies, I hope that we're streaming okay now. Um, it looks like we are. Oh, no, it went down again. No, no, okay. <sighs> Isn't technology fun? All right, so granulated sugar bowl. Um, I did talk briefly about our skulls, our skull molds. Let me go over that real quick because it's important. These I got from a company called MexicanSugarSkull.com or Mexican Sugar Skulls and their, re their website is .com. Um, they are from Mexico. They make a variety of these themselves. They actually vacuum press all of them themselves. So they're featured in that video. Um, so they are one of the, the biggest manufacturers of these molds and you can order them online. You can also sometimes find molds, uh, smaller molds like this at craft stores. Mine are a little bit dusty, but there's a variety of types like these kind of have flower eyes. You can kind of see that. Okay, and they've got the, the cheekbones that are often associated. Different um, parts of Mexico have slightly different traditions on the way that the sugar skulls look. So if you go to um, MexicanSugarSkulls.com, they actually talk a little bit about that so you can understand, is this more of an Aztec tradition? Um, is this more Southern Mexico? Is, you know, different areas. So you may want to do a little research on that. These are great if you're doing a lot of them and if you're doing, as, doing them as gifts. Um, these are fantastic. I like a larger mold um, because it gives me more space to decorate. And I, off, I even have, I have a mold that's even bigger than this. It's more like this, but um, he takes a long time to dry. So, <laughs> um, and you'll notice I cut these up because when I use them for classes or if I'm using them for multiple kids, uh, they don't always want to have to wait to share. This one does actually come with a back, so I can do the front and back. Just for today, sticking them together takes a little extra time and they have to be fully dry before you do that. So we're just gonna worry about the front today. Now, these kinds of molds, these silicone molds that you can get everywhere, they're great for chocolates, candies, things like that. They are not good for this activity. I have found that when you try to flip them out and take them out, they just end up a crumbly mess. So these have too much flex to them. You need something with a little more rigidity like these molds okay so don't don't be tempted don't be tempted all right so that's our mold okay and i am sorry for the technical difficulties i truly am and i hope that everything is working properly now so i'm going to start with just one cup of sugar and i you know you don't have to be perfect about it okay so there's my one cup of sugar this is our meringue powder now you may be wondering what is meringue well, it's basically egg whites, okay? So this is not an allergen-free um, product, but it's basically egg whites, um, usually a little bit of sugar, a little bit of cornstarch, and a bit of um, like flavoring, like a little vanilla. That's what you get usually because it's often used for icing. And this is why sometimes people prefer to get the kind that's really made for sugar skulls because it doesn't have all the extra flavors and stuff in it, okay? It doesn't have... Um, so what's going to happen is the egg whites, if you've ever, um, you know, gotten like egg whites, if you're making, baking something, if you've gotten egg whites on your hand and they dry there, you'll notice that they really do harden and make a film. We want that because the, the meringue, the egg whites are going to basically cement our sugar together. And that's what we're looking for. But we want to use a minimal amount of water to activate the powder, okay, but not melt the sugar because we want that hard crystal structure that sugar gives us so that we get a nice hard skull to decorate. So um, there's a lot of chemistry that's going on here. The albumin in the egg whites is doing that job of cementing everything. The cornstarch is drawing the water out um, and holding things together. And then of course our sugar is providing the actual base kind of our brick material. Now, where did I put, here we go. So it's one teaspoon to our cup of, whew, and it is powdery, gets everywhere. Um, our one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of um, meringue powder. Very easy to remember um, and very easy to scale up. You know, make as much as you need or as little as you need. It scales very easily. 
I'm just going to use my measuring spoon to start mixing it. And you want to mix it well. Um, when I'm making a larger batch, I'll get out the whisk and really make sure that the meringue powder is broken down and distributed throughout the mixture because if it isn't, you're not going to get a good sugar skull. You'll get clumps instead of a homogenous sugar skull. Okay, so I mentioned the, the crystalline structure of sugar um, because sugar is kind of a very special, especially granulated white sugar like this. Um, tends to form really nice, neat blocks of, sh of um, crystals. And as a result, you know, you can get a very strong structure. Think of like putting bricks together. Um, all right, now we're gonna add water. Often I'll use a dropper for this, or I'll kind of flick the water on, but you may not need the whole teaspoon. You can use up to a teaspoon of water. Less is more. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just literally kind of drip, drip, drip all over the top. That's about half a teaspoon I added first. Then I'm gonna use my hands and I'm just gonna kind of pinch and work that water in as quickly as I can because again, we don't wanna melt those sugars. That gives us an amorphous um, structure instead of a crystalline structure. And that is not what we're going for. We want a nice um, hard sugar skull that's gonna last a couple of days. And I will mention, uh, you can eat them. There's nothing about them that isn't edible, unless you put glitter and feathers on it, then you know, probably not a good idea. But um, they are very hard. They're not really great for your teeth. Your dentist will not be happy with you. So you may wanna, you know, you, that may not be your best choice is what I'm saying. Okay. So there we go. This, if you see, when I try to hold it together, it's starting to hold together, but it's not staying. That means more water. And again, I'm gonna, that's about a quarter teaspoon. I'm just gonna drizzle. You really, this is the most important part. You really need to take your time with it. Everybody wants to rush, especially when you're doing a big batch. You don't wanna have to sit here doing this forever. But trust me, you can't take the water out. Once it starts melting, it's hard to come back from that and then you're wasting your sugar. So, a little goes a long way. This is one of those times you just want to take it slow. Okay, still not quite there, almost there, We're almost there. And this again, you really want to make sure you're mixing well between each addition of sugar so that um, it's distributed. And you can see I'm just using that pinching motion. If you've made things like pasta and things, you know, stuff like that, you've probably done this. And you can see while I'm working on a tray, I'm getting kind of everywhere. Um, when I do this, <laughs> <laughs> for library classes and after school classes. I cover everything in newspaper so that it's easy to clean up because it will just make a mess. I don't know. I've never had it not make a mess. I think my girls are a little neater about it than I am. Let's see how we're doing. Uh, almost. I'm going to go ahead and add just a time. I'm really pushing it now. So it's going to vary depending on your sugar, the humidity of where you're working, your meringue powder itself, the temperature. So that's why there's no hard and fast, you need exactly one teaspoon. It's gonna vary depending on so many different factors. So you just kind of have to play with it. And again, you're going for wet sand. Think about building a sand castle. You don't want sand that's too dry and it doesn't hit, you know, stick together. You do not want, um, the water, as far as being cold, yeah, you do not want warm water for this. Warm water for your your um, royal icing, not warm water for this. Colder water is better. In fact, I'm a little concerned because this room is a little warm, but there we go. Now it's sticking together. See that? That's what we're going for. Okay, so just like wet sand, just like magic sand, you want it to stick together. Okay, make sure, again, you really want to make sure it's nicely distributed and you can see I made a huge mess because I'm working in a really tiny bowl but it, it's fine <laughs> okay there we go I wish I had a sink here that'd be cool so I'm just going to take my mold this is really easy just like your kid making play-doh right playing play-doh just going to pack your skull pop it right in there so you can see this is not anything complicated it's not mysterious it's a pretty simple activity and it's really fun like for, if you have kids that are really into hands-on, that like playing with textures, they're gonna love this. This is a good time. Okay. Okay, so there you go. You, want, and you saw how I packed it in a little at a time? 
um, because you really want to get it in there as tight as you can. The more time you take really pressing it in and packing it, the better off your skull is going to be. So take the time there too. This is, remember, as you're doing this, you should be thinking about the people that you're making these for. Who, who are you making this sugar skull to remind yourself of? For me, it's always my mom. She passed away uh, almost six years ago. Um, and so every year we make them in her honor. And it happens to work out that she loved bright colors. She loved marigolds. My dad planted them for her every year. Um, so <laughs> kind of works out there. Okay, cleaning off my hands, getting sugar everywhere. Oh, I've got a lot of cleanup to do tonight. Okay, get this out of the way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a paper plate. And like I said, scrap cardboard works great for this. I just didn't happen to have any that didn't have paint all over it. So I'm going with paper plate. You put your cardboard or your plate or whatever on there. You're gonna hold it really well and flip. Okay, now you may need to tap your mold, especially if it's on the wet side, you're going to have to tap more, but you might get lucky. Oh, I did a good job. Lifts right off. So if it's not too wet, it's going to lift right off. Now, maybe you got yours too wet. It's not lifting out well. You're not getting good definition. Like you can see, I've got really good definition here. If that happens to you, try adding a bit more sugar and meringue, okay? Um, especially a little meringue. It'll absorb some of the water because of the cornstarch in there. And just keep playing with it. If it's really wet, you may have to start over again. Okay? But that's what it should look like. It should come out nice and neat like that. Now, you're not going to want to mess with it too much at this stage. It's very delicate. Like I said, put it in the oven. You don't have to turn it on. We'll put it in the oven, let it dry overnight. Okay? On cardboard, on newspaper. Do not put it on a ceramic plate. That'll trap the water behind it. So you want something that's going to absorb the water. Classically newspaper, cardboard works great. So that is our sugar skull. Now, obviously this one cannot be decorated right now because it was just made. So da -da -da -da, we're just going to swap out. See, this is like the um, Julia Child's Martha Stewart moment there. Just swapping out. Pay no attention. All right. So here we go. This is one that has dried for... Um, 24 hours, it's had a lot of time to dry. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna take one second to straighten up a little bit because I've got a bit of a bit of a messy situation here. All right, I'm bringing over my royal icing. Um, so you're gonna make your royal icing. I gave you the recipe for that and I will put a link to this entire presentation with the recipes um, into the links, into the uh, comments. So you'll have that. Um, but it's basically three tablespoons of meringue powder, six cups of um, confectioner sugar, which is this kind of powdered sugar, cornstarch and, and sugar that's been basically ground into a fine powder. Um, and then you're gonna add water until it comes together. I think it's usually about like a, a couple tablespoons of water, like six tablespoons of water. I'm sorry, I'm blanking. Um, and you're going to mix that, mix that, mix it for a good 10 minutes. You really want to make sure that the meringue, water, and sugar are very well combined. Then you're going to portion out your icing and you're going to add colorant. Um, and I do suggest using good gel um, food colorings, like the kind you might get for a fancy cake. Um, you don't want to use liquid ones because it's going to thin out your royal icing. Um, so be kind of careful about that, but you know, you use what you got. Sometimes you just use what you got. Um, and that's going to give you all this. So I put it into piping bags and you can see I've got my, whoop, my tip, which is coming out. You're going to put your tip into your bag. If you, I don't know how many of you have done icing like this. So metal tip goes into your bag or plastic tip goes into your bag. You cut a hole in there. You fill your bag with your icing and you press down from the top. Put pressure on your icing. I like to give it a little twist so that my icing doesn't come back out. And you can see that this is obviously what we were using earlier today and it's kind of dried a little bit on me. This is the problem because royal icing is meant to dry. <laughs> so um, this is why I usually don't store it, but I could, I just couldn't mix it here. It just wasn't gonna work. So, and then you just, woo, I am making a mess and that's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and have a little bit of fun 
Oh, my goodness. This is why I had my daughters do the ones that I showed you before, because they are really good at this. Um, my husband enjoys making cakes, and so he has taught them how to be really good at the whole icing thing. But, you know, I find as long as you're having fun and you're playing and you're learning, don't get too tense about it, right? Don't drive yourself crazy. Have fun. Make something beautiful, right? Because that's what it's all about, making something beautiful as a memory. This one, I'm, I'm actually thinking of my Aunt Terry right now. Um, there's a great picture. She passed away not too long ago. Um, there's a great picture of my Aunt Terry teaching my daughter to play piano for the first time. And I really treasure it. And Terry was one of those larger than life people. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go kind of larger than life here for her. <laughs> Real bright. So you can just see, I'm, and you can, traditionally you'll see a lot of um, sugar skulls will have kind of a almost sewn mouth kind of ladder pattern. Um, where their mouth goes. Um, well, my camera's not quite angled right today, but you can see. And again, this is a little more thin than I would normally like, but you just kind of have fun, lay it on, get out the glitter, get out the feathers, make them really just exciting and beautiful. I'm just gonna see if I can add, you know. So there you go. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. Okay, <laughs> so that's not maybe my best sugar skull, but I would love to see what you guys come up with. So if you make these, I want to see them. Make sure you post them and give it a hashtag for Maker Camp so we can see all your amazing creations. So that's the basics of how you make a sugar skull, okay? I'm going to take one second, put things away, and I will show you how to make a, oh yeah, perfect timing, a nice light up sugar skull card so that if you are not feeling like you are in the mood to make the mess that I just did, which is valid, <laughs> you know, valid choice, valid choice. Um, maybe you will prefer this little bit of electronics project better. That's okay. Okay, let me move the water away. Isn't it fun? I'm so glad that you enjoy that, Katie. Um, so I really do want to see, am I using different pastry tips? Yes, I did not have all the same pastry tips. Um, they were, they did not get washed the last time we uh, used them to make skulls. Um, big mistake, big, terrible mistake. Um, if that does happen to you, soak them in warm water to release the icing. It takes time though. So yeah, I'm not using the best, uh, <laughs> the best tips there. This, I like um, a finer tip. And like I said, this particular batch of uh, icing was a little thinner than I am comfortable using. I like a thicker royal icing, but it's really a matter of preference. My daughters like it thinner because they are able to do more detail than I am. So let me just show you again what they did to give you some ideas. Um, this one has a little heart and then she kind of did little dots of color. And you can see she did kind of the little teeth. This is the more traditional kind of um, threaded look, marigolds for the eyes. And then she did a sun and moon to set, uh, kind of um, symbolize life and death. So that those are my daughters, Gwen and Katie. And then over here, Gwen again went with marigold eyes. She almost always does marigolds for the eyes. Gwen loves, Gwen's a gardener. She loves marigolds. They remind her of her pop pop who um, always planted marigolds for my mom. So um, <laughs> she really likes that. This is traditional too. You see that shape of the nose? Um, you see that in skulls a lot and a lot of times that will be highlighted, uh, kind of that raindrop shape. Then we've got some flowers here. And then Katie did a really nice wreath of flowers, kind of merging different traditions. Um, Cause that's actually a little more, um, I associate it, I think of it as Indian. Cause whenever my Indian friends get married, they tend to have the wreaths of marigolds. So um, anyway, give you some idea of what you can do there. Okay, let us grab our template. So this is our sugar skull card template. Um, this is from makerspaces.com. Good resource for paper circuit templates. Um, they have a ton for like every event holiday you can imagine. Um, so you would normally want to color this, make it beautiful. I did not take the time to do that, forgive me. Um, it is two-sided, so double-sided. I did not have a double-sided printer available to me. And if you don't either, that's okay. Um, 
Let me see if I can make sure I do this properly. Right. So this has to go here. And this goes there because we are going to fold it into a card like that. Let me make sure that I've got that. And what I did is just use the glue. And I just stuck them together. Doesn't have to be fancy. If you have a double-sided printer or double-sided copier, then you are in good shape and you could just print it double-sided, no problem. If not, glue stick solves so many problems, doesn't it? Love glue stick. Okay, I'm just gonna line it up. Look at me doing this without even wearing my glasses. Okay, so if you want to color it, you're gonna color it all first. You do not want to do your circuit and then try to color this. Um, that is not going to work out so well for you. And I am going to grab, you can use either a pen or an X-Acto knife. We're going to need to cut the eyes so that, <laughs> look at that. I use a wine cork to keep my blade from, you know, cutting me because I long ago lost the cap to this knife. But it just pulled the knife out, my blade. We're just having one of those nights. That's probably my mom playing with me, if I'm to be honest. This seems like the kind of thing she would totally do. Oh, you're gonna be on camera and talking to like people all over the country? Let me come and just mess with you. That is something my mom would do. Okay, so I just did a little crosshatch just so that I can easily um, push the LEDs through. In just a moment, I'm going to grab my LEDs, and we're going to talk about how we use these. And where did my battery go? I have lost my other battery, so I'm just going to grab it out of this card. Probably dropped it. Okay, so you need three things to make a circuit, okay? You need a power source, which today is our battery, three volt battery. Always want to have the right voltage for what you're trying to power, okay? In this case, we are powering three volt LEDs, in this case, red. LEDs have a long, see, I'm gonna just zoom. They have a long lead and a short lead. The power, the electricity has to flow through your LED in the right direction. So you need to go positive through to negative, right? So you need to make sure you know that the long lead is positive, the short lead is negative, and that matches up with our battery okay, which has a positive cathode and a negative anode. It's marked, the smooth side is marked with the positive, the negative side is just rough. Always test your batteries and your LEDs by just slipping the LED over the battery and making sure that it lights up, just like that. So we have our power source, we have our load, which is our LED in this case, could be anything, but it's our LED. And zooming back out, we need somewhere for our electricity to flow, some kind of conductive material. You've got a couple of options out there. If you don't happen to have any of these fancy tapes, glue stick and aluminum foil. It'll work, okay? Trust me on this. But um, copper tape is commonly available. This is quarter inch copper tape. It's just flattened and it's got a conductive adhesive on the back. And it has a um, kind of like a sticker backing. So that's a great option that is classic for paper circuits. I am, however, using, and pro tip, keep it in the bag. This is maker tape. It is a fabric tape instead. And I find it a little easier to work with. It's a little more forgiving. Um, you can get this in the maker shed. It's also in the um, paper circuits kit. Uh, it's great stuff. It's a little more expensive, but like I said, it's a lot more forgiving. <laughs> so um, I really enjoy using this particular material. Though you do need a pair of scissors to cut it. If you're using the copper tape, you can usually tear it. I, some people are able to tear the, the metallic tape. I don't know. I, I have problems. <laughs> so I just use scissors. We're going to turn over our template. And the first thing we need to do is just lay down our conductive tape. And again, we're going to keep it in the bag and just pull some out from the bag so it doesn't go crazy. Um, and I'm going to show you how to turn your corner. Quick pro tip from the fabulous, uh, fabulous Kathy uh, uh, Sasari. Pull the tape away from the backing. Don't try to pull the backing off the tape. Um, this is going to be interesting because my hands are covered in sugar. I've never tried to do one of these while my hands are covered in sugar. But we'll see. So we're just going to start by laying down our tape. Don't take all the backing off. Go a little at a time. Okay? That's 
one of those mistakes people make. You take the whole backing off all of your tape and now it sticks to itself. Make your tape a little more forgiving. Copper tape, it crinkles, it gets stuck. You're done. Now, to turn our corner, I'm gonna zoom in here. Come on, zoom for me, zoom. There we go. You can cut it and stick another piece over. This is a pretty forgiving circuit, but you want to limit doing that as much as you can because eventually you're gonna add resistance to your um, circuit and that's gonna work against the flow of the electricity. So if you can keep it all one piece, that's always better. To do that, you go to the edge of your um, template. You're gonna fold up, kind of make a little 45 degree angle there, if you can see, okay? You kind of fold it and you're gonna come on down and fold it over like, okay, I didn't do a great job that time. But you can see, sorry, my tape is getting stuck today. And there you go. See that fold? That isn't the best one I've ever done, but that's basically what you're gonna do. Um, if you want to practice without using your expensive maker tape or copper tape, just get a roll of masking tape and practice like on the wall or on a table. And um, that way you can get really good at doing those corners. That is a tip from um, Techno Chic founder Natalie. Um, she's got great kits in the maker shed too. Oh my gosh, her blinky bow ties, fabulous for Halloween. Great project to make. Um, I'm just gonna cut away some of this, pull away some of this backing. So again, I'm making that corner again, fold up, and then carefully come over. I think I did better that time. I did do better, look at that. That's a nice neat fold. And you can see I'm just kind of pulling out the tape as I need it. There we go. And then I'm just gonna cut the end. Pretty simple. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Oh, oh no, it came out. Now we're in trouble. Apparently it's just gonna be a messy night no matter what I do. <laughs> you ever have nights like that? I have nights like that all the time. Is sugar, conductor, or insulator, who knows? Who knows? Well, I guess I'm not asking a class. Like I'm still in, in that situation where I think I have a bunch of kids sitting with me and I don't, it's sad. Anyway, if you've ever done squishy circuits, you would know that sugar is not a conductor. Um, it will actually insulate. Salt is a great conductor. Um, so yeah, actually, I guess the sugar will help me out. I won't get myself accidentally electrocuted by a three volt battery. <laughs> I don't think that was real likely to begin with. But yes, sugar. So the reason I bring that up, the, the squishy circuits, you can go online to squishy circuits and you can get the recipes to make conductive Play-Doh and insulating Play-Doh and make circuits with them. It's so much fun, go check it out. If you haven't done that before, squishy circuits. Now I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape. I don't know if they have squishy circuit kits in the maker shed. I feel like they should, they don't. I'm gonna take a piece of tape with the backing off and I'm gonna loop it so the adhesive is on the outside. Just like you might have done with masking tape to hang posters when you were a kid. Um, I had a lot of puppy dog posters around my room when I was, you know, about 13. Who didn't? All right, so that's where we're going to put our battery. We're going to put the negative side down so that matches with where we're going to put our negative leads of our LEDs. Remember, the electricity must flow directionally. So we're just going to go ahead and stick that on. Easy. Now we're going to get our LEDs and paying close attention to which is our positive lead, the long lead. We're going to just gently fold it out like that and place it. Making sure again, I put the positive on the plus side and the negative on the, mi the um, minus side. I'm gonna fold it out again. If you prefer, you can use needle nose pliers for this. I find pretty forgiving. And then I'm just gonna take little pieces of tape and attach our LEDs in place like so. Use your fingernails, get in there. If I wish I had fingernails, I've been biting my fingernails. You know, stress, <laughs> we're all feeling it these days, right? So I don't have much of a manicure. That's okay. There will be days for painted nails and days for biting nails. And so long as you have a little bit of both, I think you've got a pretty balanced life, right? Remember, it's all about staying positive right now and keeping hope. So, oh, where'd you go? Oh, we got stuck with my scissors. Okay, another piece. And again, just making sure that I've got these in the right direction. 
because if you don't, um, your circuit will not light up. That is the number one mistake made when making a paper circuit, is that you just happen to accidentally either put your battery down wrong or put one of your LEDs in wrong. Now, this is a parallel circuit. Want to bring that up. A series circuit would be a circuit where the electricity comes up, it goes into the negative lead here, out from the positive lead, into the negative lead, out from the positive lead, and back around. If we built our circuit like that in series, basically one right after the other, this wouldn't light up because each of these LEDs need three volts of electricity, and we only got one three volt battery. So we would need six volts of electricity and only have three. That's not gonna work. Instead, we built this in parallel. This kind of ladder shape means each is acting as its own little circuit. And that the good thing about that is that we only need three volts to basically power each little loop. They each work as their own little circuit within a larger circuit. Um, this is why Christmas lights are not as frustrating as they used to be. All right. We've got everything in place now and what's going to happen is when this piece of tape makes contact with the top of the battery the positive the circuit will be completed the switch will be closed the circuit will be closed and the electricity will now be able to flow through the whole circuit so we're just going to give that a quick fold i'm just checking the time oh we are very close to eight o'clock i know we've had some technical difficulties but i want to make sure you get to see your light up there we go one and where it go where is it there it is Pull that down and there you go. One light up sugar skull. Who wouldn't love that as a, as a card, right? What a great, you can make a, a whole altar out of just light up cards, right? Okay, so there you go. Two sugar skull projects that you can do for yourself and put them out November 1st. Okay, switching back over here to the camera. Look at that, no technical difficulties now. Ooh, but I do have a mess. <laughs> I like it when a project gets messy. That means I'm doing something right. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed learning a little bit about the history and culture and art of sugar skulls. Um, they are one of the most fascinating art forms out there, I think. They're a wonderful, accessible folk art. It's a wonderful way to spend time as a family, a wonderful way to celebrate our ancestors and all those that we love that maybe aren't here with us right now, but we can still feel connected to them and still honor all that they did for us to make us the people that we are now. And that's really the heart of what the Sugar Skulls and Day of the Dead is about. Um, okay, so quick reminder, uh, there are lots of other Halloween classes that you can go take a look at MakerCamp.com to see what they're offering. And of course, at MakerCamp.com, you can get all the information on my Move and Groove with Makey Makey class, which is coming up on November 5th. Remember, there are two time slots, so we've got lots of spots open. <laughs> so as many people as possible can participate because it's going to be a ton of fun to use coding and crafting to make music and get creative. So I am so excited for this class. I cannot wait to get started. Make sure you go to MakerCamp.com and register today. Do not wait because spots will fill. Um, you're also going to make sure that you order that Makey Makey Invention Kit. Okay. And we've got the link for that on MakerCamp.com too. It's inexpensive. You will find a million uses for it. I actually have a friend, Andy, who's like a professional AV tech. And he saw this the other day because I had like bananas hooked up as a piano. And he started just coming up with ideas. You give something like this, you know, this invention kit to someone who is creative and wants to invent and they're gonna come up with things you could never imagine. So I can't wait to see what you guys come up with when we get together for Move and Groove with Makey Makey. Okay, Whew. that was a lot. I am so glad that you joined me here tonight. Um, I'm really glad that we got to share a really special um, tradition together. Uh, so my name is Sandy Roberts. I am a STEM educator. I am the author of the big book of Maker Camp Projects, and I can't wait to see you again very soon. Have a great night and thanks for coming to Maker Camp for Halloween.